and make sure that technology and all is working. If you all can see me and hear me, let me know in the chat box below if you're tuning in on the Crafty Gemini Facebook page or on the Crafty Gemini YouTube channel. So I'm coming to you from my home sewing studio here in North Central Florida. Hi, Nancy tuning in from Clermont. That's a Florida neighbor. Hi, Susie. Hey, Margie. All right, awesome. So I'm going to give it a second. Let me grab a sip of water before we jump right into it. Hey, Lori from North Carolina. Okay, so today, hi Ruby. Today we are talking about a new product that we've added to the Crafty Gemini product line. This is my wash away foundation roll and it includes one roll in here of wash away stabilizer that has been cut to two and a half inches wide. Now, maybe if you don't do machine embroidery, you don't know what a wash away stabilizer is, but I'm going to show you exactly how I use this to make the most of my fabric scraps. Now, I know a lot of us quilters probably hold on to these scraps, and if you've been sewing for a long time, you end up with trash bags full of scraps. Now, I don't know about you, some people have no problem holding on to that. I feel like I get some anxiety of like, too many scraps, I don't need to see them because then I start going crazy okay trying to figure out how can I use them they're not too big they're a little bit small there's so many little random off cuts and so here comes in the wash away foundation roll now if you're tuning in and you're new here if you're watching the demo you're trying to figure out how this all works whip Wednesday episodes uh, the whip part of stand or uh, part of it stands for um, a work in progress so WIP that's what we call whip Wednesdays and it's kind of like a laid-back chat here where I feature something we do a little demo and I answer your questions live okay hi Estela hi Sandy tuning in from Pennsylvania let's go ahead and actually I'll show you though the way that I'm going to be working with this and I'm gonna share with you some tips and tricks this is a roll it's two and a half inches wide by 25 yards so a long long roll and here I have <laughs> a long scrappy strip if you're a quilter or maybe you've subscribed to the crafty Gemini YouTube channel for years you know that I have hundreds of instructional free video tutorials that would be awesome to make with this. You're basically taking your fabric scraps and turning it into your own custom made unique fabric, okay? And the wash away foundation roll is on the back. It's serving as our foundation. So if you're a quilter, maybe you've tried foundation paper piecing, you know that sometimes there's a technique where you can use a thin paper behind it as your foundation. That's what we're gonna be doing pretty much with this wash away stabilizer. The only difference is that it's not paper, so we don't don't have to go back and rip everything off you just stick it in water or wash the finished project and it's all going to dissolve on you so let's go ahead and switch the camera to this angle and we'll talk a little bit more about the product and how it works so we're selling it in the online shop right now remember I said it's two and a half inches wide uh, and 25 yards in one roll we always include links in the description box in the chat box on where you can find this I know a bunch of you have already gone ahead and taken advantage of it and purchased yours okay this is in the online shop we have it for sale right now anytime you're tuning in here or you want to purchase something from our shop we have hundreds of both digital and physical products in our crafty Gemini online shop so all you got to do is visit the website craftygemini.com and then click on the shop link and you'll see it there It should be the first product if you're watching us live so this is gonna be a lightweight non-woven wash away stabilizer on a roll so let's see a little bit of how it works Here's some that I already went ahead and did. And you can see your pieces don't have to be the exact same width or the same height. So I'm gonna start jumping right into this and showing with, uh, sharing with you how I set myself up. Because for something like this, you wanna kind of be building up your scrap roll here assembly line style. So let me show you how I set mine up. I have a little, whoop, a little plastic bin here, and then I grab this bamboo knitting needle. You can use a box, a bowl, just something to raise your roll up so that it makes it easier for it to roll off of. Now, I'm not going to insert this here because then the roll, because it's still brand new, this is a, a new roll, it's still thick and it's gonna be rubbing up against the bottom. So ideally, you'd have it up so that it's not, as you're unrolling it and working with it, it's not dragging on whatever your box or bowl is, okay? So real simple, I'm just gonna put it like this. So you see how when I pull on this, it's just unrolling. You could do this with a box, a dowel, just, you know, be creative, use whatever you have at home. So this is going to make it a lot easier for me to just unroll as I'm grabbing my scraps and going. Okay, so that's tip number one. All right, let me scoop my um, sewing machine over. And this, I'm going to set it up to my right hand side. You probably won't be able to see that, but just know that it's off here to the right. And I 
Just put a little piece of washi tape to keep the roll, you know, from unwinding by itself. Now, a quick tip, and this should probably have been tip number one. This is the most important thing to keep in mind when you're working with this wash away foundation roll, okay? Keep all water away from it, okay? I feel like sometimes people think, well, you know, yeah, I had a little water on my hands, no big deal. I sneeze on it, no big deal. Literally do not put any water on this thing until you're done with your project because it's going to dissolve. And if, say, you get a drop of water here, that bit is going to dissolve and you know what it's going to do. It's going to basically glue the rolled up layers together. You don't want to do that. Okay. So again, just make sure you keep everything dry as you're working with it. And now I have a little bowl of water here. So after we do some of this, I'll show you how it dissolves super easily. All right. Give me one second so I can pull up my chat. My screen went dead here for me for a second. Uh, all right. Perfect. Okay. All right. Oh, Joy says she's watching me on the big screen. Awesome. Technology, right? So cool. <laughs> okay. So I have my roll. I'm sending it to the right of my sewing machine. The reason for this is that I like to sew this way, and most of us are used to sewing so that we set up the right side edge of our presser foot as the guide, okay? Sometimes you'll see people show you how to do it like this way, but you're basically, if you do it that way, it's backwards for a lot of us of what we're used to. And another issue is that you're gonna have to set the seam allowance, instead of following the right-hand side of the presser foot, you're kind of doing it backwards and lining it up against the left hand side. So I don't want y'all to have to retrain yourself for anything. We want this to be super duper easy. So when you start off and I have a bunch of little scrappies here, can y'all see those? Yeah. Let's start. Hmm. That's, this is going to be the part that takes you the longest, whatever. Let's grab one of these. So when I start, you take a chunk. Now remember that the strip measures two and a half inches wide. So you can have a piece that measures two and a half inches tall. It can be longer than that because at the end you can flip over and use the edge of the wash away foundation roll as your guide to then trim away any excess. So it's really simple. This one seems to be about two and a half inches tall. You can see I'm a little bit off there. It's no big deal. Any excess will get trimmed away. Then I'm going to grab another piece. So the same way that we would sew, if we were just sewing these two pieces of fabric together without the foundation underneath, we would put them pretty sides touching, right? So I'm going to do the same thing, pretty sides touching as far as the fabrics go. And then the foundation roll is just underneath. Now I have my machine already set up to a quarter of an inch seam allowance. This would actually also be a great project to teach beginners or kids because you don't have to sew a perfect or scant quarter of an inch. You can even use, you know, just run the needle straight down the middle, use a generic seam, and as long as you're consistent, it's gonna be just fine. All right, so I'm just sewing through all the layers. Two layers of fabric, pretty sides touching, and then the foundation roll. Now this sewing machine that I'm using here is a basic machine, so I obviously don't have an automatic thread cutter. On my other machines, that do have automatic thread cutter, let me tell you, you will fly right through this because you just, on my jukies, I just hit the heel, it cuts the thread, boom, I grab the next piece and I keep on going. So now when we open this up, all the quilters out there know that you probably need to press the seam here. Now, you do not want to get an iron, whether it's a dry iron or a steam iron near this, right? Steam, Definitely not because that moisture is going to shrivel up and start to dissolve your wash away stabilizer. So instead, we're going to either finger press, which just means this. You kind of scratch it with your nail right there and it just stays easy peasy. So saving yourself time there. Or you can use a little seam press. There's some ones that have like a roll on them. If you were in my Clammy Quilt Club, and you ordered a kit, you know that you got the three-piece uh, three finger pressing set. So this is the little tool that comes in there. It has a little divot uh, to put your finger, and you can just run it back and forth like that to press the seam. Um, these, I think, are currently out of stock, but we did just place another large order, so they should be restocked shortly. I think I set it to back order because they're going to be shipping to us soon. So if anybody wants that pressing tool set, you know, you can get that also on our website. All right. Um, so let's see, I'm going to grab the next piece here. Okay. And let's go with a longer one. Now you may be wondering, well, why would you need the, the wash away stabilizer if you could just do this 
uh, you know, one piece at a time just without it. So a couple things. One is it's going to stabilize the grain line. So you can really place your fabric pieces here in any which way. It's giving you the visual of the height that you can then trim. Have any of you ever sewn a bunch of little scrap pieces together? And then when you lay out the roll, instead of being a straight strip, it bows. This is going to help prevent that. Okay, so it's serving as your foundation so that you can build your new strip on it. But there are a couple things that you definitely want to keep in mind. One is shorten your stitch length, and that's just going to help you have kind of more coverage, like more tighter, more um, uh, secure stitches by them being shorter. Okay, especially if your pieces are a little bit longer, you'll have to go back and trim them away. And if you have long stitches, you don't want to trim away and then have those stitches on either end start to come apart on you. So I'm using about a 2.2, 2 millimeter, I would say 2 to 2.2, 2.4 millimeter stitch length, and that would work fine. So like this, okay? Then let me go ahead and grab another one. I'll use the pressing tool to show you how I do that. So again, just pretty sights touching. So notice, I don't even have to take this away from the bed of my machine. You can just set your stack of scraps and just start cutting, or excuse me, start placing them in there to sew them. And then, here's a tip that kind of at the beginning when you first start working with it, you'll see that this may happen. And the key is to make sure that you press the fabric out of that seam allowance. So if I'm going like this, notice that I'm tugging on this one. I don't want to have any fabric bubbling there at the seam line. I'm going to take my little finger pressing tool and just press down on it. So when you go to add the next one, if this is completely flat, you're going to be in a better situation to add the next piece without running the risk of having any fabric bubbling here. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So if I kind of scoot this over like this, you see how there's like a little bubble there and I don't make sure that this is absolutely flat. You go ahead and you put your next piece on. You're now going to be stitching that fabric underneath with a bubble in there. Okay. And I'm going to do it so you can see what the error is here. So once you kind of have yourself all set up, you can see how you can easily breeze through assembly line style and just get into the groove of things. But you have to, you know, troubleshoot these little things and make sure that you're adding the stuff, you know, the next fabric piece correctly, because otherwise this is what happens. So say I go in to finger press this, but now look, because that first layer wasn't completely flat. Now the fabric is swimming in there because I've now anchored it down into place. Okay. You don't want that. So one thing you can do is come in here and I just cut the stabilizer because now the stabilizer is not stabilizing it and holding it bent up. It's now just allowing that fabric to go flat against itself. And this is not going to affect anything, right? Because we are using it as a foundation to build our fabric on, trim it down to size. And then when you stitch this into your project, after the project gets washed, it's all going to dissolve away. So that's a quick tip. Try to avoid that. But if you can't and you find that it happens to you, just trim, you know, cut the stabilizer to free that fabric up because that distance there of fabric that we had was what was bubbled up and you don't want that in your project for sure. Okay. All right. So let's see. Uh, Barb says, I don't think I have the patience. Let me tell you, this is like so Zen for me. It kind of feels like when I don't want to knit or crochet and I just want to sit and spin some yarn where I'm just like grabbing the next piece and spinning and spinning and spinning without really thinking too much. That's how I feel like this is. And if you have a lot of little scraps, this is a great way to just when you can't be bothered to check measurements or follow a pattern or like get into a real kind of a complex project that requires a lot of brain power. This is the perfect thing to get your sojo back and just feel like, you know, you're still moving the needle and doing a little bit of sewing because when you have the roll done, I mean, you can use it, say you're working on a quilt and it's taking you forever because maybe the patchwork is really, um, complex. If you need a break and you have scraps from that project or another one, you can make your strip and because they're two and a half inches wide, say you make this strip out of the scraps of the leftover quilt. It's two and a half inches wide, then you can use it as the quilt binding. So you're not wasting any pieces of the fabric from cutting the patchwork. You're gonna go ahead and put it right back in and make a scrappy quilt binding. And I think that would look absolutely super cute around the edge of a quilt, okay? Now for my projects, y'all know that I love to make scrappy tote bags, zippered pouches, 
table runners, placemats, what else, um, oven mitts. And so as you create your own fabric, using up the fabric scraps, making your own roll, then you can just cut this up and make, you know, whatever the project is that you want to make with it. I'm going to cut this up and share with you a couple more things about this. See here? I'm just rolling it back onto itself and I can just tuck it there and keep working on that later. Okay. So yes, Becky says it's like upscale crumb quilting. Absolutely. Yes. David says this sounds great when I use smaller pieces to put into larger blocks. Absolutely. And so look, I mean, this took me maybe 15 minutes on my other machine, obviously that had, um, the automatic thread cutter but you have this entire roll that then you can chop up and do whatever you want with. But what I want to do now is grab a little piece here and show you um, with my little water spray mist bottle. Let me grab that and a couple little pieces so that you can really see that like you really don't want to have any water near this, okay? Because it's going to fully dissolve. So <clears throat> here's a little piece, just two pieces of fabric, all right? And you can see the stabilizer on the back. If I spritz this with water, you can see that it's already starting to dissolve. Okay. If I submerge it and it gets sticky on my hands, it's going to start to completely, this is a stabilizer. You see that how it's just coming apart. It's just completely peeling away wherever you sewed your seam that is completely stabilized. So whether you sewed something down on the bias, if you're someone like me who tends to be really rough with your fabric pieces, you know that when you're sewing something on a different grain line, that's not completely stable. Like on the bias, if you tend to like hold on to your fabric as you're sewing the seam, or if you're distorting it a little bit, you end up with wonky fabric, right? The patchwork will not line up straight and be square. And then you have to trim it down, trim it down to make it look right. So what happens here is that because the foundation is behind it, you're holding it together. Everything's lying flat. You stitch your seam allowance. And then when the project gets washed, it completely comes away. Okay. So it fully dissolves. So that's, I just want to kind of to show you all the visual. So another thing is, like I said, do not use an iron on it. You absolutely do not want to use steam. So I'm going to spray this again. right down the center to give you that visual. Let me peel this up. It's super already. Look at it. It's literally dissolving right there. You can see it's turning to nothing. So if you are working with something that features bias cut edges, curves, or something that you just feel like for some reason I cannot manage to get the seams right or to keep that fabric flat, consider using this to help you stabilize that along any grain line. Okay. Um, Ruth says she likes the spray bottle. So this is something that we also carry in the online shop. It's a spray mist bottle and it's, um, at craftygemini.com slash shop. And we put the link also in the chat box there for you. So here it is. Now this is one way, right? Say you're working on something super complex or you're putting a lot of this stuff together, or you want to maybe, um, combine the fabric strips or the scrappy strips that you made with a fusible interfacing, right? So think about that. You will not be able to just take this with the stabilizer on the back and try and fuse it to an interfacing because this is going to bubble up in front of you as that interfacing dissolves. So you don't want that. You would have to get rid of this first dissolving it and then move on to the project, right? So I would definitely recommend using some type of sewn stabilizers. If you're using fusible fleece or something like that, don't worry about the fusing part. Just go ahead and stitch it into the seam so that it's there. And then when the project is washed, uh, the, the wash away stabilizer will all come away from it. Okay. Now, Let's talk a little bit about, where's my piece here? Let me make sure that I dry this up because I have a couple of water droplets here and I don't want this to stick to my cutting mat. Um, Joanne is asking, can you leave that stabilizer in the block? Absolutely. So by the time, you know, you give the quilt or whatever and they wash it, then it'll come apart. It'll fully dissolve and be completely gone. Like it was never there after the project is washed. Okay. All right. Noel says brilliant that the roll is cut to two and a half inches. Perfect for so many things. Absolutely. You remember years ago, there was this really popular, um, let me grab my rotary cutter while I talk. Um, 
that was a really popular, like the jelly roll race quilts. Remember that people would just sew the um, two and a half inch strips of fabric just together, together, and then just pick it up and, and start sewing a quilt together. You could totally do that. This would also make a super quick, uh, say charity quilt or baby quilt. If you did say a, a wider strip of a solid fabric, and then you break it up and create your own quilt design with some scrappy ones in between. I mean, that would, I mean, that's a weekend quilt right there, right? So once we have, a long strip or the piece that you need for whatever project you're working on, you can see that this is all, um, they measure different, right? Differently. So we're gonna flip this over and I'm gonna take my five by 10 ruler, cause y'all know this is the Crafty Gemini ruler that I like to use for this kind of stuff. And I'm gonna align it and use the edge of my interfacing here of the wash away foundation as the edge of the guide. So I don't have to be looking to make sure that I'm two and a half. I see where the stabilizer is and I'm just gonna cut away any excess. Okay, do the same thing to the other side and you're gonna end up with a perfect two and a half inch strip. Easy peasy. Just like that, okay? And there you can see, you can make, I mean, <laughs> so many different things. Now the one that I made here, this super, super long one, I used um, some small squares that I had from my friend Sarah Watts's uh, Pearl collection, P-U-R-L, like pearl, like knitting and purling. And I love these colors, look how pretty this is. And so I made this super long roll that I'm going to turn into a zipper pouch. So say you come up with the dimensions or you're following one of my tutorials and it tells you 10 inches. I'm just gonna place my five by 10 ruler here and just cut 10 inches. And based on the height, say I wanna go three roll or three strips high. Same thing, just take your ruler. That's one, two. That little bit is kind of off, right? Because we haven't measured, we're using different random pieces of scraps. But as you can see, that's only one eighth of an inch, so it'll actually get caught in the seam allowance, which makes it even easier to deal with. Oh my gosh, that little bunny is so cute. And so then the last one, say I wanna go three strips. Okay, so I have that. Remember the stabilizer is still behind. We haven't done anything with it. We pretend it's not even there. It's gonna get washed away in the end. So I'm gonna bring this one to the middle because I like that bunny right there. Marilyn says this is so satisfying. You have no idea. Wait till you get your hands on it. And if you're tuning in new, we are talking about our new uh, two and a half inch by 25 yard foundation roll. This is a wash away foundation where we're using our fabric scraps to make our own fabric. So like here. So now we're just gonna sew them together like you would any other strip. So one to one. And this is actually turning out pretty funny because I actually have points to match here. Where normally, if I were to sew this to something else, oh, and this is the wet one, um, you would be fine to not match up points because if you're using odd shaped or odd dimensions that don't match up, that would work great too because then you don't have to worry about matching points, but me, I'm gonna have to match these points because <laughs> they're calling my name. Oh, let's see, don't judge me if I don't match them. But that's the idea, right? That we don't have to match because all the scraps are random different. Um, widths and I'm actually not gonna match them let me just look away and pretend and just stitch where it lands so again here okay have any of y'all worked on quilt projects where everything is cut to perfection you go to sew seam and then the second or third seam for some reason one of the strips or one of the pieces ends up being longer than the other the foundation keeping it in here is helping us keep everything the same length so that it doesn't distort okay so it is stabilizing every seam in this project as you sew it. So I think it's super fun. <laughs> so again, we don't wanna hit this with an iron. I'm gonna grab my finger pressing tool here. Oh my gosh, how cute. Ooh, those points match right there, right there. The rest are off, right? Because they're different widths. So you just go like this, boom. That's it, no iron needed, right? Then this next one, See how this is kind of, the, this is the same print. I'm gonna flip this guy over. Oh, and it's the same print there, but it's a little bit off. And that way you can play around, kind of creating your own designs as you work with your scraps. So again, 
everything is still stabilized. It didn't matter if I was sewing the pieces together along the crosswise grain, the lengthwise grain, even on the bias. And, and I sewed straight lines, but you could have odd shaped um, patchwork pieces or scraps left and you can sew it at an angle and then go ahead and attach a larger secondary piece and sew it down. So you can end up with not just straight up and down seams, but like really uh, like triangle shaped things, you know, at angles basically. So you see how nothing ends up stretching? There's not one that's longer than the other, and it's because of the foundation. It's like a, 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 a mystery foundation that nobody knows you're using because in the end, when the project gets washed, it's completely gone, right? But you know that, look, nothing is extending past on either side. I haven't distorted anything because it's helping me keep everything in shape. I'm used to finger creasing. Like, I just run it down like that with my nail. Oh, Diane says, I was using the paper tape rule that you find in the cash registers. This is so much easier. It is because you don't have that step of actually having to get rid of the paper. This just dissolves, okay? Look how cute. Tell me that won't be adorable. And say you wanted to make it bigger and maybe you don't want to waste your entire roll on a couple projects and you want to kind of stretch it out so you're able to do more with it. You can add a strip of a solid fabric here and here, make a tote bag. I mean, there's so many different projects. And for those of, those of us that feel some kind of way, just don't want to get rid of the scraps, but you're not sure what to make with it because the fabrics are all different collections. They don't all match. This is a perfect scrappy project to just start doing stuff with. Now, I have a sample here that I made uh, the same thing from three of these strips. But this one, instead of sewing it into anything, I just went ahead and dissolved the wash away foundation in water. And then I took it out, I rolled it in a towel, and then I pressed it with an iron, okay? If this was sewn into something, it would work a lot better, obviously. But I wanted to show you, and you can see that it's a little bit stiff, and that's because some of it is still in there. I didn't, I, I didn't actually wash it. You know, I just soaked it a little bit, peeled some stuff off with my hands, and then tried to dry it. But if, if you were working on a project that you needed to have that foundation gone, because whatever the next step is in the construction process requires steam or a fusible stabilizer, you can see that that's another option that you can do. You know, soak it overnight, get rid of all the stuff, you know, submerge it a couple times just to make sure that you're getting away or uh, getting rid of all the wash away stabilizer and then move on with your steps once you let it dry. Okay. Marilyn says this would make an adorable quilt border. Absolutely. Quilt border, quilt binding. If you have, you know, sometimes the fabric manufacturers will come out with a, uh, a panel and then there's like a, a kind of supporting fabric collection. If you did a panel and then bordered it with some scraps of you know, the same collection, I think that would look awesome because it would totally match. But look how pretty these fabrics are. And all the colors match. So if you are working with entire fabric collections, save those scraps because you can see that all the fabrics go together. They're part of a collection. Whereas if you're just using random scraps from different fabric collections, that gives it an even scrappier look and you can do whatever you want with those pieces as well. Okay? So let me see if there's any questions here for me. Joan says, what a great idea. I have a ton of scraps. Absolutely. So we have the product for sale in the online shop at craftygemini.com slash shop. We'll put the link in the video description if you're watching us here on YouTube as well as in the Facebook chat. Uh, it's on sale right now. We have a couple dollars off of the regular price. So if you do want to grab one, go ahead and snag it. It is pretty lightweight. So I did go ahead and set the shipping so that the shipping rate is the same if you order, I think, two of them. And then if you order three, then it goes up a little bit because the weight is kind of past the next um, weight range of the shipping with USPS. But yeah, I think one, two of these would be awesome to get y'all started. If you're making any of my quickie little projects for the holidays and you have scraps, don't even bother to buy new fabric, right? Grab one or two of these rolls, take out all your fabric scraps, just start hacking away at them and you'll be able to crank out so many cute zippered pouches, pot holders, table runners, you know, all the little projects that I have on the Crafty Gemini YouTube channel. I definitely have a ton that this could be used for. Okay, oh, Alyssa, thank you. She says, you're such a great teacher. I was trying to show you all the different things. I wanted y'all to see how serious I was about keeping the water away from the stabilizer because it will dissolve. And for those of you that are maybe tuning in just now, let me grab just a little chunk of the stabilizer and cut a little piece to show you just by itself in water how quickly it dissolves. So you don't want to sneeze on it, spray it, add steam or anything to, you see? Ah, I don't want to put it in my hands, it gets sticky. 
and it just dissolves so, so easily. So whatever project you're making, as long as it can be washed, obviously if we're working on quilts and pot holders and all that kind of stuff, everything is just gonna um, dissolve right before your very eyes. You can soak it or just wash the finished project and all of the stabilizer will be gone. Okay, so I hope that you all enjoyed that demo. Awesome, Carolyn says, thank you for your tips. Yes, Wendy, the quilt binding would be nice. And, um, and you know what, too, part of that stabilizing it along the um, quilt binding part, you're gonna be stitching it in, flipping it over, stitching it again. So even if you have asymmetrical angles and like triangular bits that you sewed onto it, it's all gonna be like little pops of prints and color in your quilt binding, and I think that would look fabulous. You don't have to worry about it distorting at all because it's going to be super stitched in there, right? At least twice by the time you wash the quilt. All right. Um, let's see. Oh, awesome. Linda says this will be great for your holiday gift bag pattern. Absolutely. It's a scrappy project, a little drawstring gift bag, and you can make it even scrappier, not just two and a half inch strips, but two and a half inch strips that are then made up of smaller bits of your fabric scraps. All right. So thank you everybody for tuning in this week for Whip Wednesday. If you want to get your hands on any of the products that I featured here today, you can head on over to craftygemini.com shop. And that is our online shop where you can pick up the wash away foundation roll that I was showing you how to use today. The spray mist bottle, all that kind of stuff, the ruler I used, everything. So thanks again for tuning in. I hope you all have a, a great rest of your week and I will see you on Friday if you are one of my fiber friends. Just a quick plug here, this Friday we are kicking off Fiber Fridays which has to do with fiber, not as in edible fiber, but as in wool, cotton, and yarny type of fibers. If you are interested in stuff that has to do with crochet, knitting, spinning, uh, circular sock machine knitting, I'm going to be starting a brand new live event series. It kicks off this Friday. It will be the first Friday of every month going forward at 7 p.m. Eastern, right here wherever you're watching me. So if you're watching me on Facebook, we're going to do it here again. And if you're watching me on YouTube, we will live stream there again. It's just going to be another laid back chat but it won't have to do with sewing and quilting. It's going to be just fiber related stuff and I've been busy knitting, coming up with new designs, making socks, making shawls, spinning. So I'm going to share all that stuff with you as well as some fun book resources and see what knit alongs and crochet alongs we want to work on going forward. So if that's something that you want to participate in, check back on Friday, October the 1st, 2021 at 7 p.m. Eastern right here on the Crafty Gemini Facebook page and the Crafty Gemini YouTube channel. All right, so I will see you Friday if you're into that kind of stuff. If not, I'll see y'all next Wednesday for another episode of Whip Wednesday.